I'm Captain Al Caputo, and for the last 20 years, I've made my living as a professional charter boat captain. Taking people fishing and enjoying the outdoors is what part of nature and being near the water is all about. And I'm sure you've all gone down to the docks on a Sunday afternoon and watched the charter boats pull in, and you're wondering, where do these guys get all these fish? I mean, every time they come in, they've got fish on the boat, and I go out and I fish, and I fish, and I fish all day, and I'm not seeming to catch any fish. They must know something that I don't know or they must have some kind of tackle or secret weapons that we don't know about. Well, now it's true that uh, we do have our little secrets, but on the most part, rigging for saltwater fish is an art, and the details make the difference. It's not a secret bait that really catches those fish. It's how the bait's presented to the fish in the water. And what we're going to do today in this Captain Series video is show you how to rig like a pro. There's a few standard rigs that all charter boat captains use, and that's the ones we're going to get into here today. We're not going to get into exotic baits. We're going to get into baits and rigs that you can buy anywhere locally and do the same thing we're doing here. The consistency is the key. If you go out there and you use these rigs time after time, they'll work for you. Let me dispel just a few myths about fishing. First of all, you don't need a $200,000 sports fisherman. You don't need $500 rods and reels to go out there and catch fish. Uh, you can go to Sears or Kmart and buy good serviceable tackle that'll just about fit anybody's budget. Fish don't know what kind of boat you've got until it's in the boat and it's a little too late for the fish. So what we want to do here is uh, go through some basics and uh, learn the, uh, the art of rigging. If this is a video and I want you to sit back and relax, watch this video a few times over before you really get deeply involved in trying to do the baits like I do. The thing I suggest you do first is I'm going to give you a list of the things you're going to need to rig these baits. Get yourself a pencil and paper, sit down and relax, and write down the things I'm going to show you. First thing about rigging is you need good equipment. We're going to start with a 4-inch Forstner German stainless steel bait rigging knife. You're going to need a small knife like this to do your tight work, to do your close work. Okay, the knife runs five, six dollars. It's not a lot of money. This is a knife I use every day. This knife's probably three years old. If you look, you'll see there's no rust on the knife. It's not dull. It's still holding up real well. The second knife, you need a good eight inch German steel 440 stainless fillet knife. This knife is to cut large baits in filleting fish. You also need an ice pick. You'll use this to hold some of your baits when your hands get slippery. I'll show you what this is for later on. One of your major, major arsenals, weapons in your arsenal is going to be this side cutter pliers. The reason I say side cutters, this cuts on the side. Don't go out and buy a pair of mechanics pliers or wire cutters. They're not going to do the job. These are designed to cut rigging wire and to crimp crimpers and line without a lot of problems. Okay, to buy them, they're only about $18. They're stainless steel. I've had these for the last three years. I keep them clean, but they'll be serviceable for a long, long time. A good stone is very important. Stone should be carborundum. It should be fine on one side and rough on the other side. The rough side, if you notice the line that I've put down there, is where I sharpen my hooks. Okay? Hooks don't come sharp out of the box. Keep that in your mind. Don't just take a hook out of the box, put it on your rig. It's not going to do any good. To connect our baits to our lines, we're going to use wire. It's called rigging wire. This is a spool of number seven coffee wire. We call it coffee wire because of its color. The color is very hard to see in the water, and it's a mid-range type of wire. A wire is listed by size, like number one wire would be the thinnest, number 14 wire would be the strongest. This is number seven. This will do you for sailfish, marlin, kingfish, uh, tuna, uh, barracuda. Remember, their mouths are real brittle. A lot of them have teeth. If you rig up on your fishing line, they'll cut it and they'll be gone and you'll lose the fish. So invest in a quarter pound spool of wire. This will last you two or three weeks and it's only about five or six dollars. Here we have copper ballyhoo nose wire. It's a small tube of copper wire, about eight inches long. We'll get into the aspect of the copper wire when we go to the ballyhoo rigs. You'll want to also purchase a small container of waxed dental floss. Okay. Dental floss is very strong, and the wax dental floss does not get affected by the water. It's used in tying gill plates. It's used in sewing baits, along with the bait rigging needle. 
bait rigging needle is a four inch bait rigging needle, which also I will go into later on when we get into those rigs. You want a few lead weights, quarter ounce in size, which are gonna be used in the squid rigging process. Now let me get into an area which is hooks. I'm sure if I go into your living room right now and open up your tackle box, I'm gonna find a ton of hooks laying helter skelter, rusty, probably not sharp, and you're wondering why you go out there and the fish you do catch, you're losing them. Your hook is the only thing that's between you and that fish. It's good. If, if it hooked up good and he's got a good strong hook, you're not gonna lose that fish, not to a hook anyway. So when you go out and you buy hooks, try to buy the best hooks. And you might be saying, well, is it brands? It's not brand names. They are single strength and double strength and stainless steel hooks. You don't have to go through the expense of stainless steel hooks until you're rigging for the big marlin going out with artificials. A double strength hook will suffice any application. We have here the couple of hooks that we're gonna use. And if you notice, there's not a lot of hooks here. We're just gonna use three basic types of hook. The first hook we're gonna use today is a 10-0, double strength needle eye hook. Now remember I keep reiterating double strength. Don't forget to buy double strength hooks. Single strength hooks will bend, they'll break, you'll lose your fish that you spent all day going after. Here is the reason we call it a needle eye. It has like an eye of a needle. It's not a round hook that you're commonly used to seeing. This is called a needle eye hook. It's meant to embed in the fish's body so when you put it in the fish it doesn't impede his swimming by changing the shape of his body. Now you might say you know, that's awful technical. Well, if you want to go out there and do this, and I mean serious about doing it, this is where it all starts and ends, is at the rigging table. You've got to do the right things. The fact of putting the wrong hook in the right bait, you'll lose the fish. The second hook we're going to use is what you're commonly used to seeing. This is an 8-0 ring eye double strength hook. Notice the ring. That's why we call it a ring eye. This is a good hook to use in baits that are very pliable, like a strip bait, a squid bait, so the bait itself imparts the action. This does not impede the action in those baits, and that's why we use it. The next hook we're going to use for the ballyhoo rigs is the 8-0 short shank needle eye hook. Again, double strength. None of these hooks are single strength hooks. They only cost a few cents more, but they're worth it at the end of the line, believe me. Again, the needle eye, because it looks like the eye of a needle. Now, we've pretty much covered what we need to use for this rigging.